All right, where are we? Okay. We're right here. I put down a post in a random forest. I didn't mean to. Well. Well, it happens. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna remove these parts of the barrier. Mm-hmm. There we go. <gasps> the red crown crane! Oh, darling, look! Oh, they're dancing. Oh! Wow! It's a lot longer in real life, right? It is, and a lot more like intricate, and there's a lot more to it. Um, and these guys, let's double check because there's actually some great entries when it comes to their behavior for when they breed. They're monogamous and, oh, oh my. <gasps> That's so cute! That's adorable. Oh my gosh, that was really cute. Kitsumi. She's not expecting babies. Oh dear. Uh oh. Her fertility is very low, so yeah, that might it might take a little while. All right, where were we? Uh, they choose their partner in a courtship ritual called a duet, where they perform a synchronous dance. Should we have danced? I just gave you potatoes. Just potatoes works. So the potatoes worked. To initiate a duet, a male and female will move towards each other rhythmically until close. They may then hop, spin, or call, spin, skip, bow, jump, beat their wings, move their necks, and strut along. They like do everything. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, and beat their wings, move their neck, and strut along in a long mimicked sequence. In a flock, one pair duetting is likely to cause other pairs to join in. So you have like, a, mm. what do you call that? Um, flash mob. Yeah, basically flash mob dancing. <laughs> A pair's dance can occur in different situations and are thought to also play a role in advertising territory, choosing a nest and fending off rivals. Close to breeding season in April and May, the females of a pair will choose a nest site and both cranes will build the nest together, generally on flat ground near tall grass. Oh! Nests tend to be built from sticks and grasses directly on the ground. Once built, the pair is aggressively likely to... <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, right? that's probably why people are afraid of large birds. Because would you... Okay, well, you always say you could take a goose, right? Well, okay, so that's my... Oh, wow. Well, those, those things. So it's not that I think that I could... Okay, I do think I could... So here's the thing. <laughs> so if you go on YouTube, which you're on right now, listening to this, watching this, there's a million videos you can find of a person being chased by a goose. And they freak out. Like, universally, people, when they're chased by, a, like, a Canadian goose, like, screaming and running away. And I'm not saying that those people are wrong for doing it. I've just never happened, have it happened to me. And I'm like, what would happen if that happened to me? Would I freak out and run away? Because I feel like I could just pick the goose up. They're not that heavy. They're, like, 10 pounds, right? Right. They're like, 6 pounds. And just stick them under your arm like a football. Yeah, just like hold them and just be like, no, bad goose. <laughs> so I want to know, right? So like I want to have that experience to know how I would respond if a goose is just coming at me. Oh, I think we're well matched, darling. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean because I too wouldn't mind if like I have to escape an angry bird one day. But I feel like I would be more intimidated by the large cranes. I mean, a large they're, crane. They're like yeah. looking me in the eye. Look at that beak. Yeah, the, that, the, okay, that beak's different than a Canadian goose. That's true. Like a know, little goose, it's not sharp. He's got the little, you know, what is he going to yeah. do? A little <laughs> nibble me? <laughs> He's going to stand in front of your car and refuse to move. Right. <laughs> right. You just pick him up and be like, no, bad goose. And then, like, continue about your business. But, but this beak is different. Very different. Yeah. Very different. Like, it, it, anything where we get into, like, cranes or, like... Herons. Cassowaries. Remember when we learned how... Well, thank you for that, dear. Uh, remember when we learned how the the blue heron, who mm -hmm. is, like, very endemic across all of the United States, more or less, with that long beak very similar to the crane's beak, uh, actually can kill, like, bald eagles yeah. and other large birds because they can stab with that beak. Yeah. That sounds like they could stab me. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to have a lot of caution. <gasps> we have, apparently, we have some crane babies on the way, darling. Well... She's really, I like the very contemplative, like, I'm thinking about it. She's like, oh, man. You know, my favorite thing to do whenever I'm, like, waiting. Offspring imminent. Okay. That's, that's. I guess we don't have long to wait. Maybe not. Is there Ooh! an egg? Look, let's give her a cherry blossom tree. Oh, that's really cute. Yeah. Like, to celebrate the babies being born. We'll put down a couple cherry blossom trees. I like that. Was there an right. egg? No, we... we skipped straight to the egg hatching. Okay, so we've got some mammalian red crown cranes. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, Very I cool. Think... We should charge more hey! for that. Oh, oh man, that is cute. Oh, oh man, gosh. that is cute. <laughs> That's really cute. So this falls on, the, there's a binary with bird babies. 
They're either absolutely adorable. Oh my gosh. Or they're like terrifying. alien. Like, like are, crows. Or are Gouldian finch babies. Oh, they just look like like aliens. Yeah, like we loved our Gouldian finches so much, but their babies were what I dubbed alien flesh nuggets. And I still have the vlogs and our very, 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 very old vlogs uh, on here on this channel where you can see my little alien flesh nuggets. And Gould, like the Gouldian finches had that extra feature of having those glowing fluorescent dots inside their mouth. Mm -hmm. But this guy, oh, he's got the zoomies, darling. He's got the zoomies. Okay, I want you to look at this, right? Okay. Shrink the feet a little bit, the legs a little bit. Uh huh. Squat the neck, a little different thing. That's a kiwi. Don't they kind of <laughs> look like little kiwis? Like somehow the like wow. short fur, like the shirt fuzz, and then the like little chicken wing right here. That makes a lot of sense. You see if what you, I'm saying? If you think about like when kiwis stopped developing the ability to fly mm -hmm. i wonder if from an evolutionary perspective it's not like you you develop wings that can fly and then you evolve them further and make it so they can't fly anymore you probably just regress like when you have fish or other animals that get lost in a cave and they lose their eyes mm -hmm. i wonder if because this is a baby bird whose wings aren't like developed mm -hmm. kiwis kind of have that look because their wings regressed and they just don't fully develop anymore. That's just my guess. One day we'll we'll see one in, in person. They need to add kiwis now. You have awoken. I, I thought I could not be spoiled enough because we have red crown cranes, we have platypus, and we have our boy the Kiwibara. I forgot about Diego. Diego's got to get in here. We're talking about Dora right. the Explorer. Now we got Diego I know, in here right? too. Okay, so let's get D these guys in here. Do you think that uh, our red crown cranes and our Kiwibara and our Nile Lechwi will all get along? Yeah, of course. With our tapir? Yeah. And our wild water buffalo? Sure. Let's do it. Yeah, what's the worst that'll happen? <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. We're just going to add all of them in. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Uh, also, you know what we should be doing is we're sitting here talking and learning so much about all these animals, but we uh -huh. have not educated the people. Mm -mm. Like at all. So we need to go ahead and guest facilities. That's fine. Okay, finance wouldn't be bad. Like, hey guys, I hear you got some money. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and let's find some nice educational things we can put in for people. Oh, what's this? Cute. Oh, wow. Is this a mod? No, that's uh, a blueprint I have oh. for a trophy. Oh, wait, what did we just have? Hey, hey. we earned a profit. We're what actually profitable. Cool, and we can put down... Oh, we already have an info stack, though. It was that guy who survived the apocalypse. Oh, that's right. That's he's my already, guy. Yeah, he's already running it. So I don't want to put him out of a job. Um, okay, I'm not looking for info center. Okay, give me just a second. It's been a long time. Media and education, darling. That's what it is. All right, and then let's come in. Aha, here we go. This will do. Ah, uh, This is go. all we ever need. Is that facing the right way? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then we'll put it in. Mm -hmm. And then from now on, we can just like copy this around. Like, oh, good beautiful. enough. Good enough. Because we've got a lot of animals in here now. So let's put down a couple. And then people are going to be like, wow, those animals are so amazing. Take my money. Uh, I'm going to put one over here. Perfect. Perfect. Because I just noticed they have speakers. So we don't want to overlap the speakers. All right. So let's start learning a little bit about the red crown crane. Mm hmm. And we actually need to have uh, maybe another vet. We can probably afford to hire another vet now. And they can help us out because the vets are the ones who fill in the Zoopedia information. And this will fill in with more information. And oh, I didn't know that. More. Yes. That's really cool. So right now, if you go into our Zoopedia, you may have noticed that we have a bunch of like locked food enrichments mm. and habitat enrichments, diet, and fun facts. With a vet researching them, like so in their free time, they will fill in that information and we'll actually have more. No. Oh. All right, all right, hang on. We're gonna get in here. Tortoise. No, I'm waiting for my, okay. The Nile leech we are coming in. All right, we'll do Galapagos tortoise. Did I just put like animals from across the world? I wasn't gonna say anything. 
into the same spot? I did. I was going to say the guests won't know any different, but you're educating <laughs> them, so they're going to notice now. Hey, we'll just uh, strategically manage the signs. Oh, and I forgot to edit the barrier, so no wonder nobody is, like, just standing over here. Here, we'll come over on this side. Hey, it's my TP. Hey, Tapir! How you doing, buddy? And we're going to put in window. There we go. <gasps> it's time! Oh, oh my so cute. gosh, darling. It's our boy Diego. Look at that. Look at that confident strut. I Diego's love like, welcome to my habitat. These he are knows. My, these are my pets. <laughs> Got small tortoises. <laughs> Got he, some funky birds. Look, he's happy that he lives in a diverse place. Probably not with the animals he thought he would, but he's happy. Oh, and look at our Nile Lechwe. Oh, yeah, we learned that they like to be in water, right? Yeah, they're um, actually an antelope species that shows up in marshy areas with a lot of water. They have special hooves that actually let them run through mud quite a bit more. And one thing we saw that was really fascinating was when the males will fight for territory. Oh yeah. They'll jump into the water and lock horns and fight in the water like trying to drown each other. That's that's pretty wild. That's brutal. That's very different from our boy Diego. I was going to say that's not going to that's not going to fly in Diego's domain here. He is so Can we so call this domain? Can we name exhibits? Yes, we can. This is Diego's domain. All right. Diego's domain. Just don't use like apostrophes. Oh, does it not out. like Okay, cool. Freaks out. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's find out if we have enough toys and food for Diego. Well, I know we don't have enough toys. But look at this. He's he's the alpha. I, I could have told you that. <laughs> oh, he's the alpha capybara. He's like, "Yes, this is this is what we are doing here." All right, so let's see. Uh, so we want to find for our capybara. Let's do it. Okay, so <gasps> he has a little underwater plant feeder box, darling. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, Come. that's cute. I don't cute. know how that's going to work. I don't know, uh, but that's his food enrichment taken care of. Rubber I want to see him duck. come. Rubber oh, yeah. duck. Okay, a little rubber ducky. Do you want to know what's really cute, darling? What's up? So with uh, our rubber ducky. We can change the color. What color you want our little rubber ducky? Ah, where'd he go? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Blue's pretty cute. All right, we'll have a little blue rubber ducky. Can okay. we edit anything else about it? Uh, the beak as well. Oh. So you were right. Now the guests are saying like, wow, this place they're, is they're so here to cheap. see Diego. They know about Diego. You're more aggressive with raising the price and it definitely benefits the animals, I think. Do a little... He's got a big old smile that way. That's pretty cute. Hmm. Yeah, we'll do that. We can change it later. Maybe it'll be like Diego's duck, and then we can sell it in the the toy shop. Oh yeah, we'll sell some gift. We'll we'll sell some replicas that people can take home. Yeah, with so they can be like, oh, that's Diego's duck. I want to I want to get that for my kid. Maybe they'll enjoy their bath better. <gasps> Hot water tap. Oh my gosh, darling. Okay, maybe we can put, like here. There's a I love that pond. Here. That pond looks awesome. Right. The animals seem like they're super happy right now, too. So, I don't know how these hot water taps work, but we'll put these over here. And I think you can actually put in, like, a water heater now, so you can make, like, a little hot spring. Mm. We might have to enlarge this one to make that work. All right, habitat. Hang on here. Heaters and coolers. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> oh, Diego's oh, oh, taking oh, oh. a gander. Oh, we're sauntering he came over. right over. Yeah, he knows what's up. <gasps> hey, buddy. Oh my gosh, are we gonna get are we gonna get some hot water action? Can you sell? Can you make like a gift shop that sells like Diego T-shirts? I wish. Look at our little baby crying back there. This is quite the uh, menagerie of animals. Are the other ones getting uh, interspecies bonus? Let's see. Tapir wants. Uh, he's he's snuggling with. <laughs> <laughs> the Aww. antelope, it seems. But they are getting interspecies bonus. He is actually getting interspecies bonus. Everybody likes hanging out with Diego. Oh, not the, the Not lechwee. the lechwee. Who do yeah. they want to hang out with? Hmm. Maybe the water buffalo? <gasps> lechwee! They love the giraffes, too. They got a good choice. They, they good they taste, have, rather. They have good taste. They have very good taste. All right. This is wonderful. Look, more people are moving around. Oh, my goodness. Who else do we have coming on in? Oh, the caiman! I bet we have to, like, put the caiman somewhere uh, before we're able to go ahead and carry on. We could probably stick the caiman in here. A little I, one? Yeah, a little teeny. What are our objectives? Oh, yeah. 
Let's see. Oh, we need some exhibit species and one different habitat species in the zoo. Uh, and we actually are really... What, darling? We're, we're knocking wow. it out of the park. I never get these done this well and this fast. <laughs> See, chat, see, 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 everybody, I'm, I'm helping her stay on task. What? That's an unheard of phenomena in this, this household. Well, not this Are household. There, is there, there's a new exhibit. Yeah. There's a new exhibit guy, right? Yes, there is. So let's actually see if I can find the new exhibit animal. Ooh, no, that's a North Taiga theme. Uh, I wish it were are they, just are those me... all Are those mods or are those all like in the game? These are all uh, from like workshop things. Okay, gotcha. Because I will spend forever on the workshop. I get you. Just like patrolling and searching mm -hmm. uh, for fun things that can be added on in, like this frog and snake exhibit. I was just saying they look really great. Yeah, they really look great. Um, we can actually afford the frog and snake exhibit. I just don't know where we would put it. <laughs> can mm. I stick it over ooh, here? Ooh, oh, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Oh, it's perfect, darling. Boom. Oh, it, oh, wow. That looks awesome. Oh, wow. That looks great. Okay. Wow. We really lucked out there. Um, and then we need to find out what exhibit animals we can add in. The Brazilian wandering spider. That would fit. Is that is that the new one? In the uh, pack? no, but it is the only one. Oh wait, is that? <laughs> oh, that's pretty, well. That would be the only that one. That would be that's the problem. problem. Uh, okay, so the new one is actually a newt, a species of newt. There's mm -hmm. titan beetle. Oh, we could put anaconda in here. Oh, that'd be fun. Goliath beetles, golden poison. It's this guy. Is he new? Pretty sure. You keep driving. I'll look it up. All right, let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that no, maybe not. I know it's a newt. It's a species of newt. Pardon me, it is not him. <gasps> Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I feel so bad now because when I heard there was a newt added, I was like, yay. Now I'm like, yay. Wow. I've never seen him before. That's the beta fish of newts. He is. You see what I'm saying? Oh, with those fancy fins yeah. and those spots. I like him. Where is he from? How, how do we say this? The Danube. The Danube. You'll, you'll see it. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's really specific. <laughs> okay, let's see if we have some of our little friend, the new newt. Uh, let's see. That just describes what he... Uh, As with all crested newts, the species express sexual dimorphism, where males have a distinctive spiked crest running down the length of their entire spine during breeding season. The interesting thing is the last... Additionally, they are known to hybridize with other newt species, which can contribute to a decline in pure populations. What? That's wow. That's interesting. Well, on the one hand, you could consider that like as a threat to your species. But on the other hand, if when you need to, you just go ahead and make babies that adapt because right. they're hybrids. Right. I feel like in the long run, you're going to come out on top there. Right. He's not worried about species yeah, he's purity. He's not worried no, about that. No. All right. So we're going to look for the newt. Oh, my gosh. Oh, thank goodness that there's... I've never noticed the search here. If this has been here the whole time, all I can do is just lower my head and 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 apologize for how long it's taken me. All right, this newt's a little better. And now we have a male and female newt. And what you, happens when you put them in, mm -hmm. the exhibit will change oh. see, to what they need. And they go immediately in there. And we got to do a lot of research on them. We also need to make it like cooler and ironic, like less human, they live in the water. Yeah, wait, what? <laughs> How does that work? All right, come on. Temperature needs to go down a bit more. In the 70s, there they go. So now we have our little newt pond. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, look at them. Oh my gosh. Oh, those so are cool. the beta fish of newt. Wow, they're beautiful, darling. I really like them. Oh my word. Wow. Okay, I'm Those very are happy beautiful. about that. They're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, and uh, our Galapagos tortoises are attracting protesters. Oh, because they need uh, they need some buddies. They shy. They shy. They're so shy. Yeah, they're, they show shy, and they're upset about that. Uh, Dora the Explorer, let's see, it, <laughs> like, where she's at. Because, I unfortunately, that's just going to keep happening until Dora. So she's currently researching in the workshop. Mm -hmm. So what we can do to assist this is we can make it so she only focuses on uh, mechanic research. Ride inspections. Oh, right, with, like, trains and stuff. Yeah, with trains and boats and things like that. 
Okay, well, that's happening. Let's get another species. Oh, look, everybody's coming over to see I would do. That's, uh, I really love those newts. I did not expect to like the newts as much as that. And I feel a little embarrassed to admit that because um, whenever we go to like real AZA accredited zoos and other places, you and I are usually like all over the uh, amphibians, amphibians and the oh, snakes. Yeah. Do you remember that huge frog they have at the St. Louis? What are they called? It's the, the the chicken frog. The chicken frog. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's just gigantic. It's an enormous frog. All right. Or is it a toad? Is it a chicken toad? It might be a toad. I think it's a toad. toad. Because it's not in the water. And isn't it from China? Oh, boy. Are you getting me on... on you get you're catching me in 4K here. Hang on a <laughs> All right. Let's see. And meanwhile, I got some anaconda added in. So we have two of our exhibit species. <gasps> we don't have any water for the, the lemurs this whole time. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, and I can't do any sculpting because it's disabled by the scenario. Oh, whoops. Okay, hang on. I believe the one we saw, uh, the one that's called the mountain chicken... Is what they call Mountain it. chicken. Or the giant ditch frog. The giant ditch frog. Is native to the Caribbean. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's not native to China. All right, so we're going to take good care of these guys. Multiple animals have low welfare. Oh, no. Lemurs are just cats with extra stuff. Oh, we haven't given the lemurs any toys, darling. This is terrible. Oh, no. I'm we'll fix sorry, it. little guys. We'll fix it. We're coming. Oh, good. The water just went up. So we put in a bunch of water for them. Yes, important alert requires attention. I know we're working on it. Why does Aisha have... Oh, because they're shy too. So don't worry. Huh. We're going to take care of this. Is it... If you click on it, is it because there's other animals in here? No, it's because of the people. Are you... So okay. The stress almost always means that it's because there's a lot of people and they're okay. very shy. That's easy to fix once we have the one-way glass. Until then, it can be very, very tricky to fix. I have an easy fix. What's the easy fix? Ticket prices is <laughs> that would make it so that the animal was not stressed for a little while. You have me there.